I want to talk to you about cracks in buildings. We're getting loads of emails at the moment from people who are really worried about seeing cracks opening up on their buildings. And why wouldn't you? You pay enough money for your mortgage, you don't want to see your house fall down. But do not worry, your house is not about to fall down just because you see a few cracks opening up on the brickwork. So relax, go back out in the shade, pour yourself a drink and wait until this drought is over because one day it will be over and the rains will come and all that clay that's shrinking all around London and other places will start to swell up and those cracks that you see will start to close up again which is the reason why you should never ever fill those cracks. Some surveyors are saying fill up those cracks, repoint and see what happens. The worst thing you can do on a building that's supported on clay is to start filling those cracks up because when that rain comes and we get what we call the heave and those cracks start to close up again miraculously. What will happen then is that if you've filled them, if you've been around and you've diligently pointed up as that surveyor suggests, you will find that as it tries to close up, it will push against your hard sand and cement that you've put in because you're always going to put in a nice strong three to one mix, aren't you? You put your three to one mix in, the building is trying to close up, it can't close up and it just pushes it further apart. So the next time you get a little bit of shrinkage, the clay dries out again, that crack is even bigger. So you've put more sand and cement in it and then it tries to close up again and in the end it pushes the building apart till you've got a whacking great gap that you could drive a bus through. So don't do it. Wait until the rains come because when the rains come, that's the time when we can assess the damage caused and we can decide what to do. Now in London, what we used to have, they would dig a trench and they would dig a trench not very deep because they didn't have mechanical diggers and things like that. They went down maybe a foot or so and then they started to put in brickwork and the brickwork was generally a little bit wider than the house wall would be in the end. So if you had a house wall like this, what we call a one brick wall, on the foundations they would step them out slightly like that so they gave it a better bearing but that was still sitting on a load of old broken brick and rubble and anything else they got and in the end of course you've got the clay underneath and of course as this clay shrinks dries out here that wall will be unevenly supported the, the clay has shrunk it's cracked in places and your foundation will follow it and you will notice on your brick wall that you have a crack along the mortar line going up there, going up there, going up there and going up there if you're lucky. Every so often it might take a bit of a shortcut and grow across one of your bricks. But in old buildings that is far less likely to happen because we had what we call sand and lime mortar. That is mortar that didn't have any cement in it. It didn't have any great strength, it didn't have any great adhesion. You could lift these bricks off, you could break the mortar off with a trowel and the bricks were ready to use again. Marvellous stuff. We did away with that because we wanted speed and ease and whatever else and we went for sand and cement. But what you find with the sand and lime mortar is it's very forgiving and if it cracks it's going to follow the line of the mortar. But if you've got a foundation down here, say, and it's moving around, you may not even notice the cracks because instead of just having one major crack, say a 10 millimeter crack along this line, you may have a two millimeter crack along that mortar line, two millimeter crack along that mortar line. It's kind of spreading it out. And so you wouldn't necessarily see it. And then as the rain comes back in and all this clay swells up again, as we like, what colors water? That's blue. As the water comes back in and all this swells up again, all these little micro cracks across the wall will just close up. And it's been happening for a hundred years or so. Okay, we haven't had a drought like this one, but we've had dry spells going back to 76. I remember that various other ones where this was happening. And of course, the insurance companies were inundated with inquiries, with claims, and some people had to have their houses underpinned. Now, if you underpin a house that's on clay and it's built with sand and lime mortar, you don't necessarily have a foundation here. You've just got brickwork. So you've got to start putting down some concrete underneath that. And the way that they did that is just to 
dig down a meter or so down here with a hole with a trench again you would maybe do another one there you would fill those two with concrete and then when they had had a chance to set you would dig out an adjacent one beside that they were just working along the structural engineer will give you a digging plan and he'll show you exactly what to do here so you can do those up to about 600 millimeters wide sometimes a bit more and you fill those with concrete and by the end of it you've got yourself a foundation where there wasn't a foundation before you got yourself a concrete foundation now very very important by the way is you don't bring this up to the top here you don't want it hard up against that brick you want to leave a gap you stop it short and that last bit you dry pack with a very strong dryish sand and cement it's hardly got any moisture in it at all you ram it in there and that fills that gap up that last bit and the reason you do that is because if you float that concrete right up to the underside of the brick the concrete will shrink when it dries out and you will finish up with a gap between the brickwork and the concrete top which will be enough for that building to drop so you don't want that you want to make sure that it stops short and you fill that last bit once that concrete has shrunk slightly couple of days or so you go round and you ram the sand and cement in there dry packing it all the way around worst case scenario that may be what they do with your house now some of you will have observed there is still clay down here the clay in London goes down a long way so what have we done we've just increased the depth of foundation but we're still ending up on clay and that is still a problem because in a protracted drought that clay will dry down so you can still get problems with clay shrinkage you can still get problems with subsidence you get problems with subsidence on houses which are built with concrete foundations simply because the clay beneath them dries out and the concrete foundation which is probably poured in one go just cracks across it just falls apart because there's not a great deal of tensile strength in that concrete now you could put reinforcing bar in there and that's what they do in America they dig shallow but they use lots of reinforcing bar across the foundation and they don't dig so deep but they, they make sure it's a strong thing and so if the ground starts to move beneath it there's a certain degree of strength in the foundation so long as it's supported in a couple of places by and large if you've got yourself a good old sand and lime victorian house in london and you're seeing a few cracks in it it's no reason to get alarmed now if you've got yourself a house that was built say from the 1930s onwards and may have been built with sand and cement and you've got a concrete foundation nice deep concrete foundation say three foot deep the brickwork is built on top of that and if that cracks and the wall cracks above it because it's not going to crack across the wall in the way that the sand and lime does it's not going to spread that movement out over the whole wall you may find that you get one large crack all the way down through the foundation and up through the wall and at some point or another that may have to be addressed you, you may find that when this moisture comes back in the ground it's unable to push that concrete foundation together again and you've got a crack there that needs to be repaired and one of the most popular ways of repairing a crack is what we call helical tires you can get those from safeguard europe and we chase out the mortar courses say every third mortar course along here we put in twisted metal bar a helical tire in there with a bit of resin two-pack resin sorry that helical bar should go across there push the resin in we push the bar in onto the resin bit more resin on top and then we leave enough room for us to do a repointing job on that if the guy's good he's going to be able to do it so that you can hardly see the crack at all there are specialists around who can match the brickwork colors and they can do some fantastic repairs but not always possible sometimes you're going to see like a bit of surgery you're going to see a scar that's been left but it does solve the problem the helical tie will close the crack up now you can also do that on sand and lime but if you start doing it on sand and lime what you're actually doing is you're making a localized point on the brickwork where you're making it immovable you in other words you're putting a, a very tight corset around that little bit if you like and you're leaving the rest of it to 
just do its own thing. So what's going to happen there is the next time you get a drought, next time you get a little bit of movement, you're going to get a crack opening up beside it. And I've seen it very many times that uh, you repair that pit, you get another one. So you're chasing your tail with it. Best thing, as I said at the beginning, is leave well alone. Do not go filling those cracks up. Just wait to see what happens and then take a view once we've had a bit of rain, if we ever get a bit of rain again. There's a lot more to say about this, by the way, but I just wanted to give you a very, very quick overview of what's going on and why you shouldn't be worried. Very few things in life are worth worrying about.